Okay, guys, so I've opened up Cinema 4D. What I'm going to do is I'm going to save my project, save as, and uh, that way I know where that I've saved it, and I uh, occasionally just need to click Save so that I keep saving my, my changes. Uh, give it a location. There we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with a cylinder from my Objects menu. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the height of it because I want it long. So I'm going to rotate a little bit over here and zoom out and increase my height um, some. And I'm going to make my cylinder editable by clicking over here. Now I'm going to go to my polygon selection and so that I can select the poly the difference polygons that are on the faces here on the end. And I'm going to get my selection tool select these and go to edit and delete there you go i'm going to rotate it so that i can get to the other side and um, again click and drag so that i can select all these edit and delete and now go from polygon to object uh, okay and i'm going to rotate it again and i'm going to select a subdivision surface and I'm going to make my cylinder a child of it. And this gives a lot of geometry to the cylinder, makes it smoother. I'm going to create a new material. Uh, turn off the color. And what I'm interested in is the luminance channel. I'm going to activate it. And under texture, I'm going to bring in the image that I created in Photoshop. Um, and I can close this panel now. I'm going to drag the material onto the cylinder. And uh, you can see over here in my objects manager that uh, the cylinder, the material has been applied to the cylinder. I select the, the material tag, <clears throat> and down here uh, in the attributes panel, you can see. Okay, I'm going to add a camera now to the scene, and I'm going to zoom out, and you can see that the camera is in the scene now. Um, and I'm going to move the coordinates of the camera. I'm going to zero these out. Zero, zero, and finally zero for the y-axis. And now the camera should be right in line with the cylinder. And I'm just kind of rotating around. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the camera, and I'm going to uh, zero out all the coordinates, and I'm going to find I'm going to turn it uh, vertical 90 degrees and now I'm going to grab the I'm going to grab the select the move selection tool select the camera and then grab the the correct axis to move it straight down and I just want to position it at the beginning of the cylinder I'm going to go into the camera by clicking the little white uh, square over here uh, you can uh, alternate in and out of the camera um, and okay, so what I'm going to do is just make sure the camera is positioned correctly. Um, what I'm going to do is get a wider lens. So I'm going to go with a 16 millimeter. See how it's a lot wider. So it spreads out the, the view. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add time, or I'm going to add frames to my timeline. So I'm going to add 240, or 300. That's 10 seconds at 30 frames per second. So now I have 10 seconds to work with. My, the duration of my timeline is 10 seconds. So I'm going to go to my material tag, select it. And uh, down here, I can change the offset, meaning it's moving on its position. And uh, this is the one I want, the one that moves it forward and backward. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to animate this by adding keyframes. So I'm going to go back to zero. And over on my, <clears throat> on my timeline, I'm going to position myself to zero. And I'm going to add a keyframe by clicking this button. Go to the beginning of the timeline, move my playhead move it all the way to the end and then increase the offset by I mean I want to move it quite a bit and then add another keyframe so I went with 600 added a keyframe and as you can see there's a keyframe at the end and at the beginning 
So now if I move my playhead, it animates. I'm gonna press play here and uh, go inside my camera. And now you get to see this effect as if we're moving through this tunnel, but it's really the material that's moving on the surface of the cylinder. Uh, and it gives this uh, effect <clears throat> that we're moving through through this um, th this cylinder, and I'm what I'm doing here is I'm stretching the material uh, by uh, changing the straight the le length of the, and I already go in ahead and, and and added the, the offset to increase it to to uh, ten th uh, sorry a thousand. So that it moves a lot more and it gives the sensation that you're moving a lot faster. Um, and by increasing the length, it, it kind of stretches out the image so that it looks like we're zooming through it or speeding through it. Um, okay, so I think we're we're good there. I'm gonna get out of the camera, and I want to what I'm gonna do now is uh, change the timeline. I'm gonna open up the timeline F curve. And I'm going to go to the keyframes that I added on the timeline. And as you can see, I'm going to zoom out here so I can see the keyframes. Um, and those are the keyframes that are at the beginning and at the end of the timeline. I'm going to change them to where they're not curved so that the movement of the material goes straight through and it doesn't slowly start and, and, and slow down at the end. It just starts and ends <clears throat> so um, what I'm going to do is also I'm also going to move it sideways here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add keyframes so that it turns and we're not just going straight through but it's also kind of turning on its side so I'm going to add several keyframes one at the beginning change the parameter add a keyframe move the parameter change it again Add another keyframe, move forward, offset again, change it, and keyframe. And then at the end, I'm going to bring it back to zero, which is what we were at at the beginning. So we can loop it and then add another keyframe. And we're going to play this. And now you see that we're not only moving forward, but we're kind of turning around or turning um, sideways. And there it goes, so that it loops perfectly or seamlessly. Um, and okay, so that looks good. I'm gonna get out of the camera, and I'm gonna add a bend effect onto my cylinder. So I'm gonna grab it and put it inside the uh, cylinder. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click Fit to Parent. Uh, the cylinder being the parent, so it changes size to fit perfectly. Uh, now I'm going to change the uh, strength, and you can see that it's turning it or it's bending it. Uh, and I'm going to go inside the camera so that I can make sure that I'm not going past or I'm just turning it and not bending it enough to where I don't see the end of it. And now by changing the angle, it rotates it around. Um, and I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna animate the angle. So I'm gonna add keyframes to this. So I'm gonna add a keyframe there. I'm gonna move it forward on the timeline. I'm gonna uh, change the angle, add a keyframe, move forward in time, change the angle again, uh, just anywhere that you want. Add a keyframe, move forward, change the angle again, add a keyframe. And then at the very end, move the angle again and add a keyframe. And there we go. Um, I'm going to play this back. And now you get a really cool uh, effect where it looks like we're uh, going through this really cool wormhole that's got all these curves and we're turning and, and moving forward. Um, this is what we're looking for. Um, and it's starting to look pretty good. Um, let's uh, stop this and go to the beginning and now finally what I'm going to do get out of the camera what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a light to our scene here's a light and I'm going to select it and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it 
uh, the visibility to volumetric lighting. This will get, create this kind of light with a fog uh, around it. And I'm going to go to the size. And I, wanna, I don't want it that big, so I'm going to decrease the the um, the size of the of the fog that it emits. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a cloner so that I can make multiple instances of this light. So I'm going to make the light a child of the cloner. I've got multiple lights, but they're stacked up. I'm going to change it from linear to spherical. I'm going to rotate over here. And you can see that I have, uh, I believe, five instances. So, and I want to increase the, the, the number of lights and the radius so they're so that they line up with the cylinder and i'm going to add about 16 lights here and then i want to make sure that as i move the angle of my bend <clears throat> that the lights are inside of my cylinder so as i animate it you can see that um that the uh, the lights are i can see the lights inside and i'm going to hit a quick render here render view so that I can see what I'm doing, the effect. You can see that the lights are in there, so I'm looking pretty good here. I'm going to hit a quick render again. And you see the light is kind of coming from the end of the tunnel. And I'm going to change the color of the light, I mean, the intensity of the light, so that it won't be too white. And there I can still see the lights, uh, the stars of the material. And I'm going to change it to blue here, the light. Uh, so that it emits and matches with the with the walls of the. Uh, let's hit quick render here, and there you go. It's, it's looking a little blue now, so that's exactly what I want. So I'm going to go to my render settings here, and in the output, I'm going to set the dimensions here, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with the 1280 by 720. That's HD, and I'm going to go all uh, frames from zero to 300. Now I'm going to go to the save parameter and I'm going to tell it where I want to save, sorry, I'm going to set it to MP4, which is a video format, and then I'm going to go to where I'm going to give it a location, and I'm going to give my file uh, a name, so I'm going to save it in here, and I'm going to give it a name here, um, just so that I know, so that I don't lose track of it know exactly where it's saved and I, and I know exactly what it's called and so now I see here that there's the name mp4 I'll put set okay close this and I'm gonna hit uh, render um, and so it's gonna go through the render here uh, I'm gonna speed this up and there we see that we're uh, it's rendering frame by frame uh, 300 frames so it'll be uh, depending on your computer it uh, it takes a while, but um, but uh, yeah, it'll it'll render out into a complete video. I'm gonna close this. It's done, and I'm gonna go to my Finder, find that video, and now I can uh, preview it. And there it is. There's my final video. Uh, I haven't added the character here, but we can do that on a separate uh, tutorial. I'm going to close this, and that's it.